Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. It's a beautiful day. It's 52 degrees, windy, but nice and sunny and warm. And I'm gonna take you around the food forest and I'm gonna show you how I use neem oil and Dawn dish soap and just regular water out of the tap city water to give all of my fruit trees, plants and bushes uh, a dormant spray. Now, first of all, I want you to know that I'm using pure cold pressed neem oil with a little Dawn dish soap and water right out of the tap, okay? I use uh, Dawn dish soap because that's what I like to use in my home, and I don't think it has that much of a uh, chemical in it. But this combination of about one ounce of pure cold press neem oil and don't get the one that have a little neem oil in it and have insecticides in it guys that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the pure cold press neem oil with nothing in it and the reason why i use it is because i can use it at every stage uh, in my food forest up until the day you harvest fruit it will kill all stages of development the adult insect, the larvae, and also the eggs. The active chemical in neem oil is called zardenrachin, something like that. And the, it gets rid of insects in a few different ways. For example, it will get rid of them as a hormone disruptor. It can smother the eggs. And then, um, you know, it just... Well, the same thing. It kind of chokes them out. Now, neem oil can control hundreds of insects, over um, actually 200 specimens of insects, not just a few, but the common ones like what I get, aphids, spider mite scales, leaf, hopper, leaf hoppers, white flies, uh, let me see, caterpillars, mealybugs, those are the ones that I get. So right now I'm at the back of the food forest and that tree that you see me uh, spraying is my methylene plum. I think we're going to get fruit on it this year. I've had it a couple years. And I also just uh, sprayed the two apple trees that I have planted at the back of the Forest, food forest. Now, don't worry about the weeds. I had a lot on my plate this year. My grandkids couldn't come over to help me through the pandemic. And I restarted my company of natural hair and skin care products, Cheryl's Products. Dot com. You can check them out. So I didn't have a chance to get down and pull all the weeds out. But I know that I will. But this is the ugly part of the food forest where I have a lot of old containers. I see I have some that I need to throw away, some... Um, uh, what do you call those carpet squares that I use as a pathway, some uh, old shed and uh, rain barrels I need to have fixed. But anyway, I sprayed these three trees in this area. Now I'm moving on and I'm just going back and I'm making sure that I get the weeds and all the little crevices that something can hide. Because I think I saw a little flying insect. It might have been a white fly. I'm not really sure. But I'll double back to make sure that I get everything. And so while I'm continuing to spray that, let me let you know that that white uh, pink white chalk light that you see, it's organic as well. And I think it's called, um, I'll insert it. The ivory or organics, I don't insert exactly what it is, but I had something uh, chewing on the base of some of my trees, so I treated them. Here, I'm showing you that my apple trees are, have fruiting blooms or buds on them. I'm sorry. But now, getting back to the neem oil, that it will not harm beneficial earthworms. That's what I like about it. I know some people say it doesn't help them, but I think if you stay on top of things and you spray your fruit trees and bushes and plants when it's dormant, you can cut down uh, the encouragement of uh, activities of these non-beneficial insects. But don't worry Earthworms would not be harmed. Now, this is a, I believe it is a Yates persimmon. 
It's an American persimmon tree. Uh, it's only a couple years old. It was a twig when I got it from Stark Brothers. It started taking off this fall. I don't expect fruit. And I think I'm just bending down to verify what it is. And it is, let me see if I'm right. Yes, a Yates persimmon. And so I'm spraying all behind it, all on the ground, all over it, just getting it as best as I can. And I'm using a gallon spray uh, sprayer, okay? Now I'm moving on to a pear tree that had fire blight last year. I cut it down, kind of separated it, put it in front of my she shed, which is going to be the future home of me making my candles outside, uh... In the wintertime, so I got to get that shed cleaned out. When my husband passed away, it was brand new, full of a lot of stuff. I'm just going to, I had the kids come over, get what they want, and, and I'm asking them to come again, and then I'm going to pay somebody just to haul everything away. Okay? So I'm spraying the ground all around that pear tree and that shed, anywhere where I think that uh, insects could be uh, keeping out of the cold air. Because we've had freezing temperatures, but we've had a lot of warm days as well. Yesterday, it was 73 degrees. Right here is my Fuyu persimmon tree. Uh, last year was the second year that I got fruit. The first year, it dropped all of its fruit. The second year, we got about a dozen. This year, I think we got two or three dozen. Yeah, but it, the, food, the fruit Fuyu persimmon is delicious. I love it. Again, we have a lot of weeds and uh, grass that my grandkids will come over eventually and help me pull the, them up out of the wood chips. And it's very easy to pull up weeds out of the wood chips. And the wind is high, so that's why I had two masks on, a hat, and my big glasses. But some of it's gotten still it's blowing back on my face, so I know I'm going to have to um, give myself a facial when I uh, do go in the house. So, yeah, don't worry about the neem oil uh, killing anything beneficial in your soil. It won't deplete your soil of nutrients, uh, you know, so don't even worry about it. And even if you do have some earthworms, just let me tell you something that I read. Even if you do have some dirt earthworms to uh, die, not from neem oil, but from anything else, their decaying body also fertilize your soil. Yeah, I didn't know that. I ran across that reading something uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm just getting this Fuyu persimmon tree covered really well. Because, I mean, my grandbabies love those persimmons. Okay, so right now, this uh, dormant season application, and some people call it a foliar spray because you're spraying the entire tree as much as you can. You'll see later on, I've got some trees that are really tall, and I'm letting some of them grow tall so that they can act as a canopy and help shade some of the younger trees. Okay, but it's a good idea to go ahead on and do this uh, right before your trees start to show fruiting buds. Okay, so I'm moving on, and I'm showing you right here that I'm spraying the two mimosa trees that I put in the ground. They are ornamental. They can be very invasive, and that's why I have them back toward, uh, toward the back of the food forest, but they have a beautiful flower that will attract hummingbirds and, all, uh, and a lot of other uh, Fruit trees. You see those weeds? Since I hadn't reached, had to get down on the ground, I went ahead and pulled them up. You see how easily they came up out of that uh, container with the apple tree in. So I'm spraying all around there behind it. And now I'm spraying this apple tree because we had a lot of uh, white flies and spider mites uh, last summer and fall. OK, I went on vacation, a safe vacation to a camping resort. And then we camped out in the woods on the second part of our uh, vacation. When I came back, I had a lot of white flies and um, uh, spider mites in my soil. And so, yeah, they, they would try to, you know, stay warm, but they will come back, especially if those eggs are there. So here I'm showing you. Uh, what type of apple tree it is. I have about seven of them, guys. So unless I'm looking directly in my journal, I can't remember all of this stuff. I think, but I think this is a Crimson Crisp from Stark Brothers. Okay. And you can also use this spray, like I said, even during the growing season. 
It won't hurt you as far as even if you didn't get it all off of your fruit. Okay. Now, right here, I'm showing you my comfrey and some weeds. And I'm spraying all in there. And that's the comfrey that I use to make my weak fertilizer as well as a stronger fertilizer for my fruit trees. And you can safely, by the way, use this neem oil spray even for your indoor plants. Before I brought my tree, let me see, what kind is that one there? Uh, looks like a golden delicious. If it's not a golden delicious, I'll insert what it was. But even when I bring my trees in for the winter, I start uh, giving them a foliar spray with this neem oil Darn dish soap and uh, water to kill everything so I don't have a lot of insects to come inside of my house. And that was really good. So it's worth doing it, guys. It will not harm your kids. It won't harm your pets, your cats, your dogs. Even if you get a little bit of it in your bird freezer. Right here, I was tripping. I, I didn't think that was society garlic. And so I pulled it up. And, of course, that's what it was. And that repels insects. So I put I put it back down in there. It'll grow back. They are... Uh, uh, very hardy, society garlic, okay? And you can use the neem oil spray in your greenhouse, and I'm continuing to spray my trees. That's another apple tree. I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute. But you don't have to worry about the neem oil uh, harming or destroying your plants. I've never had neem oil to hurt any type of plant, roses, what have you, as long as you don't spray it when it's over 80 degrees. Some people say 85. I say 80 to be on the first, on the safe side because I don't want anybody emailing me saying, Miss Cheryl, I use it on 84 degrees and it burned this. It's a way to do everything. So I underestimate instead of overestimating so that, you know, uh, anything that I tell you won't harm your uh, trees, bushes, Plants, kids, dogs, pets, whatever. <laughs> okay, so these are just apple trees that I am showing you. Like I said, I have about seven of them. Now, when you're spraying your plants, trees, and whatever, uh, and it's warm outside, please do this very early in the morning or late at night. And this time of the day ensures you, if you do this, it won't cause any harm to your beneficial insects such as bees. The whole time that I was out here spraying my trees, I only saw one bee and I got away from it, meaning I moved my sprayer. I didn't spray the area where the bee was because we need our bees. And this time of year, they will be close to the ground uh, uh, feasting off of the nectar on your weeds that have a little flowers on them, okay? And if you didn't know, let me see what am I doing here. Yeah, I'm still spraying apple trees, I think. If this is an apple tree, yeah, it's in, it's in a container, 40-gallon container. That container is dug way down in the soil where the roots can come out at the bottom because that's 12 inches of wood chips where you don't see hardly any weeds. Trust me, guys, it was 12 inches high, but they they breaking down. And I was able to, and I made a video on it, I was able to go in and just dig right through it and bury some trees up high. Because this area that I live in is kind of low and my yard is on a slope. And yeah, we could flood out. So I put a lot of pieces of comfrey and you can see just little remnants of it still hanging on, which they're going to uh, grow really well when it gets hot. And uh, and I could just come in with my machete and just chop some of those leaves up and just cover them with the wood chips and they would break down and just fertilize my trees. I don't have to buy anything anymore to fertilize my trees. OK, unless I want to. OK. And also, let me tell you, this neem on, I said I don't have to give myself a facial. I I'm talking about the soap because my face is not used to soap. OK. All right. But you shouldn't put it. Hey, guys, don't go and put it directly on your face, okay? I'm just saying, if some of it blows back on my face, that's not what's going to hurt my skin or dry it out. What is, what's Because it's too diluted with water to do so. But what hurt me will be the soap, the soap in the Dawn dish soap, okay? Now, another myth is, let's see, let me, what am I showing you over here that I am getting ready to spray another tree?
and I'm at the back of the food forest. So those are my pawpaw trees that I transplanted with the help of Brian and Bria last fall. Mm-hmm. When school, was it before school was out or after school was out? I really don't remember, but I have to go check it out. And those are low to the ground. Those trees are only, this summer would, they would be three years old. So they're real small. And the wood chips uh, will allow me to really pull the, like I said, pull those weeds up real easy. Okay. Now we're moving over to my Concord grapes. Uh, they did really well. They are one, one vine. I got three of them. One vine. No, all three of those vines are only a year old and they produced and they grew like crazy. And you're going to see in a minute, this trellis that my son put up for me, and we're going to have to brace it up because I noticed we had a strong wind and it kind of uh blew down. And that's that little scooter that I was telling you that I kind of scooted around the yard in. Uh, that little green thing laying on the side. I have it laying on the side because when it rains, that seat will hold water and then it will become stagnant and, you know, be a breeding place for mosquito larvae and um, other insects. And that is... Uh, kind of tree is that in the ground oh santa rosa plum that's a santa rosa plum it'll be three years old and it really took off also uh this fall and uh like i said we had we got a nice amount of concord grapes but we got so much rain that we started getting a little fungus on them um toward the end but next year, I think I'm going to stay ahead of uh, the fungus. I'm going to try anyway. Um, we just got caught up in the pandemic, and I couldn't get any help. It, it's just a, it, This is a lot of work, and you haven't even seen half of the food for us yet, but it's a lot of work for one person, okay? So, again, I'm just spraying all of the... Uh, Vines of the Concord grapes, and uh, I'm going to, um, they're all zip tied to the trellis, and I'm going to do some studying and learn how to prune them correctly. I got them from Ison's Nursery Online, and they run across that, that uh, arbor, I think that's what you call it, and uh, yeah. So the wind is really uh, uh, blowing, and uh, so I'm trying to coat this as much as I can. All along the vines as well as um, the ground, the wood chips. Okay. And another thing, I think I said it, but I want to make sure you can use neem oil up until the day of harvest. It's not... What you use sometimes is how you do it. You got to do it early in the morning or late at night and then rinse it off if you are in a warm climate. So we're moving on and let's another apple tree. I think I just circled back and just tried to get the back of it. I'm almost certain that I did. And it's from Stark Brothers. I couldn't read that tag, so I'll insert what that what that uh, tree is. So I'm going around and making sure I get the back, I get the front, I get the top as far as I can go. And you can see there are fruiting buds. Apple trees are the first thing, uh, first things, the first tree uh, coming out of dormancy um, in the food forest. No, well, uh, the, the first fruit tree, but the first regular tree, ornamental tree, is the Sorcera magnolia. And you're going to see that one in a minute. And I stopped a couple of times. I don't want you to think that I uh, used that one gallon of spray to do all of this. I think I stopped and I had to reload three more times. But I didn't film that because I didn't want to bore you to death. Okay, so I think I probably stopped right here and I reloaded again. And then I came back and I started spraying down at the bottom of uh, the Concord grapes. And those are, there are uh, two trellises just alike right there together. And then you're going to see pretty soon my muscadines 
uh, where I harvested nine pounds of muscadines, and we ate a lot of them, Bria and I and Brian, and we made wine. Well, at least I made wine. Okay. So I'm now I'm over where the mu the musket the, the grapes are in right there. And then on the right hand side is where the muscadines begin. And this year I'm going I have a bench and you're gonna see it in a minute. Uh I'm gonna move that garden bench, put it someplace else that you see right coming up right now. And we're gonna do cattle panels because my son in law was telling me how they branch out so wide, and even on the other side of the privacy fence, we had the hardest grapes on both sides. Uh, I didn't know that muscadine spread so wide, so I'm going to do a, a cattle panel so that they can grow, they can extend out wider than the uh, narrow trellis. And here's another apple tree in the ground. It's surrounded by uh, comfrey Bria and I planted during the heat of the summer and it survived. So we can do chop and drop fertilization right in that area. And like I said, with the other apple trees, this one is uh, putting on fruit buds as well, the little sprouting buds. So I'm moving back uh, a little bit toward the front of the food forest, but before I go, I'm spraying the back of the trees that I missed. This is a kefir pear. This pear is one of the oldest trees that I have in my food forest. I bought it from, I believe, Tractor Supply. Yeah, it was only $24, and it uh, suffered with fire blight three years in a row and I just kept cutting all the decaying bad part of the tree out sanitizing my pruners as I went along and bagging up the uh, diseased uh, parts of the tree and I mean it really took off. This tree looks like it's about mm, I'm gonna scroll up in a minute and let you see it. It's huge. It's tall and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Again, because it could be shade from some of my younger trees. And this tree right here is the same apple tree I showed you previously. I'm just uh, going behind the apple and the pear tree and spraying the other side that I couldn't reach. Okay, so the video was getting too long, so I deleted some of the footage because I didn't show you how I had to spray up real high and stand up on the chair. But now I want to show you my gala apple tree. This is the tree that is the first one in the food forest usually to come out of, of dormancy. It has flowers and leaves on it around Valentine's Day. And so you're going to see here where we put uh, Christmas tree lights I call them Christmas tree lights, but they're Christmas decoration lights, the old-fashioned C9 and C7. And this is a gala apple tree, and it's on a dwarf rootstock. But this guy, just because it's on a dwarf rootstock, doesn't mean it can't get huge. So I'm going to let this tree grow because it's wide, it's real bushy, it's tall, and it, it shades my garden beds. And it's putting on fruit buds. But I'm hoping that this tree does not break out of dormancy as quickly as it normally does. Because I'm not going to, what do you call them, frost cloths on? I'm not going to do that this year. However, I will turn on the lights because we left them there. And all I have to do is plug it into the commercial extension cord from the outside. But this tree is huge. It's a delicious apple, too. Very expensive if you buy it like at Whole Foods or, or organic um, uh, produce in, you know, regular grocery stores. It's a real big tree. So I'm going to delete some of this footage because this video is just getting too long. But I wanted to show you how big it is. And I even have to go around through the garden beds to get the other side of it. But I'll show you that another time. Next, I'm spraying my Utah Gold Sweet Pomegranate Tree. This is another beast. 
Uh, this one I purchased about five years ago from Isom's Nursery Online. It was a bare root tree. And uh, yeah, Utah Sweet. The act outside of the fruit is uh, gold with a hint of a rust color. And the actual fruit itself is a very light pink. It's very rare. They don't have this tree on their uh, website anymore. But uh, it's, this tree's a beast. Um, I'm going to prune it heavily. My son is going to uh, root some of the cuttings. I think he's thinking about doing like a, a side uh, business on eBay. I don't have time for that, but I'm going to give him all of my cuttings and make sure I, I label everything. And he's going to do him like a, a eBay or Etsy store. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to show a lot of this tree. I will show it in future videos, but this tree has gotten ridiculous. This on the right side, it used to be a pathway. I can't even get in there anymore, so I'm going to have to cut my way out of it. Next, I'm going to spray my two methylene plum trees in the blue half of the 55-gallon barrels. And in between them is a crimson crisp apple tree from Stark Brothers. All of these trees came from Stark Brothers. And once again, the apple trees are showing the little fruiting buds on them. So I'm spraying real good. You can see in the garden bed next to it, uh, there's a lot of peppermint that grows all year round in grown. Uh, I'm sorry, in uh, Grow Zone 8A, North Texas and Ski, Texas is where I live, if you're new to my channel. And I have three of these methylene plum trees, and I'm pretty sure they've got real big girth on the uh, trunks of the trees. I think this is going to be the year that they put on fruit. So I'm going to shorten this and move on to some more trees. In the bed next to the uh, methylene plum trees and apple tree, this is where my Texas Star Hibiscus is. And you can see, guys, it's 14 to 20 feet high. Uh, my Texas Star Hibiscus uh, plants, they're not trees. They, even though they have some semi-hard wood on them, all of that will be pruned down to where you see the uh, height of the peppermint, and then they'll grow back. And every year they get taller and taller. And I just let the... Um, Peppermint, you just take over the bed. I really don't care if it takes it over. Uh, I just try to keep it out of the pathways. But this is a garden bed, and the peppermint is kind of like growing up all around the Texas Star Hibiscus, and it just makes a wonderful tea. So here's how wide and vigorous the uh, muscadines, noble muscadines from Ison's Nursery got. I mean, they are crazy. And so this is the one we're going to put the cattle panel on. I didn't really show it to you when I was talking about it before. But, uh, yeah, and right next to it on this side where the gate opens up. And I'm just moving around, guys, just trying to spray as much as I can. Here is a um, brown turkey fig tree. And you're going to see I'm getting ready to bend down. And I'm going to show you where this tree died back last year. I don't know why. See right down here? I'm kind of squatting down. Come on. Now I'm telling you, that's 30 trees. Because <laughs> I knew the wind was so high, I was going to have to come in the house and do a, a voiceover. But if you look down toward the ground, you're going to see real short little stubs. I actually thought this tree died. See right there where I'm patting? But it grew all the way up, guys. And I have another one on the other side of the uh, food forest, and I'll show it to you in a second. So now I'm showing you uh, my magnolia tree, Salsera magnolia. It brings hummingbirds and a lot of pollinators to the yard. Nothing edible, but I just like it. It's very beautiful, and I'll show you in the spring. So, yeah, those of you that are new to my channel, you had no idea, I'm sure, at, by watching this video that I did as much as I, or it's growing as much as I grow. So I'm spraying it real good, and I'm going to cut away so that I can show you something else. So right here, I am spraying my elderberry tree, and those are Mexican petunias, those little green, wilting little, um, that bush. But that's a nice elderberry tree, and it was another one on the other side of it. I think I edited it out, but, uh, and here's a jujube tree. 
And again, the, this is another $5 tree. It's huge. It's taller than my gazebo. And I'm just so excited about it. I was told that it didn't need another pollinator, but I really don't know. So my research says that I do. The seller said that I don't need one. I will know. He thinks it's a lane, and according to the research, it says it needs a pollinator. We will see. If we don't get any fruit, then I'll buy another one. But I don't want to buy any trees. I'm very happy. Look how tall that tree is. Very happy with what I got, and I'm just standing still. I haven't bought any trees in a year. So here we are at the front left side of the food forest in this raised garden bed. I have two cherry trees. One is a Rainier cherry and I think when I get to the other side, I'm going to show you that the other one is a, oh, I think it's a Windsor Sweet. So I'm spraying these real good. And the little uh, rim little flowers that you see, those are some zinnias. What you're looking at now is another raised garden bed with two red haven peach trees. They produced fruit last year not a lot but it was delicious one is on a dwarf root stock and one is on a regular root stock and I got both of them from Stark Brothers and uh, also in this bed I have a sun glow nectarine now I'm over here where my banana area is I did not cut my banana plants down some people think they're trees but they're not even though they can go 20 or 30 feet tall Actually, they're herbs that produce a fruit. I usually cut them down, cover them all up with a mini greenhouse. I didn't do it this year. My sprayer clogged up, so I'm going to have to take it inside. But I'm going to finish showing you the rest of the trees that I have. In this raised garden bed, I have two pear trees. And right now, you're looking at another brown turkey fig tree. And I grew this tree as well as the other one on the other side of the food forest from a pencil size cutting. In this container is an elderberry tree. I'm giving that one to my daughter. And it is trying to bud out already. As you can see there. And I have another one in a container over there. As well as a native Texas plum tree and a native Texas mulberry tree. Inside of my greenhouse, I have two improved Meyer lemons. I also have uh, two Mexican key limes and a Miho Satsuma. I'll finish spraying those trees later on after I unstop the clog. But I wanted to end this video and just give you an idea of what I'm growing in my food forest. You all know about what's in the greenhouse, the garden beds outside, and the grow boxes, but I don't think my new uh, subscribers knew I had that many fruit trees I'm working with and I've given some of them away. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Come back and visit me again. If, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye now.